Coronavirus cases reported in Los Angeles County in the last 24 hours is 1,821 with five additional deaths. Here in Torrance, 26 additional cases were reported and no new deaths. Welcome to COVID-19 Today. I'm Christine Lee. It's Wednesday, July 21st. Concerns rise as nearly 8,500 new cases have been confirmed in LA County over the past five days. Test positivity rate is now 4.8%, more than double what it was two weeks ago. Hospitalizations have also increased with 544 people currently admitted and 22% of those patients in the intensive care unit. This is nearly double the number again from just early July. Current infection rates would put the county in the purple tier if the state was still using the blueprint for a safer economy reopening system, which would then prompt closures and restrictions. Health officials say unvaccinated people and the highly contagious Delta variant are major factors contributing to the recent spike in cases, which marks its 12th consecutive day of more than 1,000 new COVID infections. L.A. County reinstated its mask-wearing mandate starting Sunday, and 17 California counties are recommending indoor mask-wearing again. Pasadena, which has its own health agency, announced this week that they would also impose the mask-wearing requirements beginning today. You can check out the city's COVID-19 dashboard at torrentca.gov COVID-19 to get the latest information, as well as the county's public health page at publichealth.lacounty.gov. The Delta variant continues to surge and now accounts for about 83% of all U.S. COVID-19 cases. That's a big increase from the week of July 3rd when the variant accounted for about 50% of genetically sequenced cases. Dr. Rochelle Walensky, the director of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, says vaccination is the most powerful tool we have. She also notes that COVID fatalities have risen by nearly 48% over the past week, now averaging 239 per day. More than 34.1 million people in the U.S. have gotten the virus so far, and it's killed more than 609,000 people. Los Angeles leads the U.S. by a wide margin, with more than 1.2 million cases and approaching 25,000 deaths. A new study out of New York University School of Medicine is suggesting that those who got the Johnson & Johnson vaccine may need to get another dose to get better protected against the Delta variant. But medical experts from Stanford University, who are part of the ongoing J&J &J vaccine trials, say the study has not yet been peer-reviewed and only looked at blood samples from 17 people. They also said the difference about the Delta variant is that it's more infectious, not that it evades vaccines. So what matters is not who gets what type of vaccine, but rather the importance of just getting vaccinated. Those who are hospitalized right now are the ones who have yet to get any shots to combat the coronavirus. Experts say the U.S. Food and Drug Administration is not likely to change its single-dose recommendation, at least for now. A vir virologist who was a part of the study says the message he wants to give is not that people shouldn't get this vaccine, but rather boost it in the future with either another dose of it or a booster of the Pfizer or Moderna. Meanwhile, separate small studies published by researchers affiliated with J&J &J found that the vaccine's protection actually strengthened over time. Road trips have been very popular during the pandemic, but for bears living at Yosemite National Park, it's been devastating. Vehicle bear collisions are now one of the leading causes of black bear mortalities in Yosemite, and park rangers are raising awareness of these tragic accidents through a social media post that is going viral. This post from Friday, called Speeding Kills Bears, features a picture of a dead baby bear after she was hit by a speeding vehicle. The story was written by an unidentified ranger who responded to the scene. The ranger wrote in detail about carrying the roughly 25-pound cub to a proper resting place in the woods, coming across the cub's mother, who never left her baby's side, and saying how sadly 
this kind of incident has become too common. The author wrote in part, quote, my heart sinks. It's been nearly six hours and she still hasn't given up on her cub. Now here I am standing between a grieving mother and her child. I feel like a monster. I get up, quickly pack my bag and get out of there. It is time to go even though my task is not done. The writer wanted people to see what was witnessed that day, the sad reality behind each of the fatalities. The post concludes with the plea for all motorists driving through Yosemite to observe the posted speed limit, be on alert, and look out for wildlife when behind the wheels. At last check, the post had more than 78,000 reactions, 6,000 comments, and 67,000 shares. We are less than two days away from the opening ceremony of the Tokyo Olympics and it looks like the U.S. women's gymnastics team will not be staying at the Olympic Village in Tokyo out of an abundance of caution. The team's coach shared on Twitter that they will stay at a hotel instead. She wrote, quote, it was also a decision that we all made together. We know it isn't ideal for the Olympic experience, but nothing is ideal during a pandemic. We feel like we can control the athletes and our safety better in a hotel setting. The tweet came before alternate Kara Eaker tested positive for COVID-19 at the training camp in Narita, about 30 miles east of Tokyo. Both she and fellow alternate Leanne Wong are now being quarantined. USA Gymnastics officials said on Tuesday that the team had always intended to stay at a hotel instead of the sealed off 109 acre waterfront section of Tokyo where 11,000 athletes will be during the Olympic Games. Despite taking lots of precautions, there have been multiple reports of athletes and others testing positive for the coronavirus in and out of the Olympic Village. Around 80 people tied to the Games have tested positive so far. The chief of the Tokyo 2020 organizing committee said he did not rule out a last-minute cancellation of the Olympics. The number of new cases more than quadrupled over the past month, from 864 on June 21st to 3,836 on July 20th. And the seven-day average jumped as well from 1,429 to 3,113 during the same period. Currently, just over 23% of those in Japan are fully vaccinated. Well, 11 years before COVID-19 was even a thought, I had a life-changing opportunity to report on the Winter Olympics in Vancouver. Here's a little bit of what covering one of the world's biggest events looked and felt like. This was back in 2010, and it was my very first time traveling to Canada. I lived in this foreign country for nearly a month, working around the clock, sometimes more than 18 hours a day to film, write, edit, and share on live TV what I've seen and who I've met. During this time, I fulfilled many childhood dreams, interviewing my childhood idol, Christy Yamaguchi, getting a chance to meet Michelle Kwan, another ice skater I admired who also has strong ties to Torrance, and being one of the first people to congratulate multiple Olympians who had just won their medals after years of hard work and perseverance. The adrenaline rush of going into work alongside journalists from all over the world was something I'll cherish forever. And getting to meet locals, some of whom I've built lifelong friendships with, has been priceless. Being at the Olympics is something you never forget. And starting this week, if the game goes on, tens of thousands of people in Tokyo will begin making their memories that they can cherish for a lifetime. The opening ceremony is set to begin at 4 a.m. L.A. time on Friday. A couple of L.A.'s most popular movie theaters will welcome back film lovers again. AMC announced this week that it reached a deal to reopen movie theaters at the Grove Shopping Center and at the Americana at Brand in Glendale. Both theaters are expected to reopen next month after being closed for more than a year due to the pandemic. AMC officials say they're each undergoing renovations and will have premium large format screens, including IMAX. AMC will be taking over the leases of the cinemas, which were previously operated by Pacific Theaters. AMC CEO and President Adam Aaron issued a statement saying, quote, The Grove and the Americana at Brand Theaters are among the most successful theaters in the greater Los Angeles area and we look forward to delivering the high quality experience for guests visiting these theaters that AMC is known for in the Los Angeles area and nationally. 
The Grove Theatre has 14 screens and there are 18 at the Americana. The Torrance Art Museum's public art exhibition called Ultra is going on right now and you can check out original pieces from multiple artists scattered throughout the city. The event officially kicked off on Saturday and goes through August 28th. Torrance residents and visitors are invited to explore some of the city's most popular areas including the Del Amo Fashion Center and several parks. Here are some artworks on display right now at Torrance High School. It's called Future Tense and is a fiber art installation. Yarn Bombing Los Angeles selected this site because of its rich history and roots extending well beyond its geographic community. And the group chose the red iron fence as a key element to allow for a COVID-friendly installation where social distancing won't be a problem and people can see it as they drive by. Yarn Bombing LA's mission is to create a form of community-generated, site-specific public art that is tactile and accessible, while at the same time initiating dialogue about cross-generation connections and craft history. You can check out this and more. Just download the virtual guide map at torrenceartmuseum.com ultra. Blood shortage has become a critical issue across the U.S. during the pandemic, forcing some hospitals to postpone surgeries. In an effort to help, the city of Torrance is teaming up with UCLA to host a blood drive later this month, and you can sign up right now to give. The blood drive takes place on Thursday, July 29th from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Ken Miller Recreation Center located at 3341 Torrance Boulevard. City workers ask that every donor make an appointment by going online to ucedonor.com. Eligible donors will receive a promotional item. Remember to eat well and increase your fluid intake a couple of days before and the day of your donation. Well, before we go, at the end of each program, we like to share feel-good stories from our community, pictures, images, and videos that remind us of how resilient our community is and how Torrance truly cares. You may notice in the coming days that the city's hometown heroes banners are coming down. The vendor plans to take down the roughly 200 banners along Torrance Boulevard, Carson Street, and Madrona Avenue from July 21st through the 23rd. They will also remove the double banners promoting the salute to the armed forces. All banners will be cleaned and returned to the city for inventory and storage. As the faces of our brave men and women come down, let's continue to remember everyone who has served our country in the past and currently serve today. If you want to include your loved one in the next Hometown Heroes Military Banner Program, mark your calendars for October 1st. The 2022 application period opens then and will run until January 27th. What a heartwarming way to honor those who are sacrificing so much for our freedom. Now, if you have a great story, upcoming event, a photo or video you'd like to share, email us at covid19today at torrentca.gov. We'd love to hear from you. Well, that's our update for COVID-19 today. We'll see you back here tomorrow as Bella Shaw brings you the latest. Be safe, stay healthy, and thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.